So um, December the 2nd, Unitarian Universalist Society of Orlando. The address is 11648 McCullough Road, Oviedo, Florida, and some uh, GPS to say Orlando. Um, December the 9th, we'll be on vacation. Uh, December the 16th, I will not be here because I'll be officiating a wedding in St. Augustine. So for three weeks, you have off on Sundays. Yes, Noran? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay, S okay. So, and we should try not to operate on Muslim Standard Time when we go there. We should try to be on time because okay. those people will start <laughs> whether you're there or not. Um, so, just remember if you see anyone, remind them. Even though I know May soon has put out the message. Regarding those three weeks, um, please uh, tell others if you see them about it. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no other um, announcements. Uh, anybody have any special stuff going on that you need to announce? Nope? Okay. Well, well, alhamdulillah. And alhamdulillah through, I'm very grateful through the wisdom and this class and uh, some very in-depth counseling. Um, we're doing really better, we're so much better, and I'm just so grateful, and it's, um, thank you for all your prayers. Alhamdulillah. May Allah give you double that. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, welcome, welcome. In Alhamdulillah Ta'ala, Nahmaduhu wa Nasta'inahu wa Nastafaru, wa Na'udhu Bilahi min Shururi and Fusina, wa min Sayyati Amalina, wa may Yahdih Lahu Fala Mudilla, wa may Yutlil Fala Hadiyala, wa Ashadu Anla Ilaha Illa, wa Tahula Sharikala, wa Ashadu An Muhammadin Abduhu Rasulu. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqu allaha haqqatu qatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun All praise is due to Allah we praise him we seek refuge with Allah from the evil in our soul and from our sinful deeds those who are guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one can misguide them those who are not guided by Allah there is no guide for them I bear witness that there is no god there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah alone as Allah should be feared, and I not except as Muslims, I'm Mabad. So today, um, there's a lot of material. Uh, will not sort of be the kind of class where we have a lot of discussion, and I will remind you that we would like to hold the discussion to the end of the class because of taping. And uh, it's hard to hear. So, um, as you will see here today, we are talking about the 50th uh, Asma wa Safat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, Ash Shaheed, the witness. And of course, we'll cover a lot of different areas with this particular Asma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, here we see the definitions the omniscient witness, the certifier, the testifier, the one who directly and ever presently observes everything in creation, the one from whose knowledge nothing is hidden, the one who witnesses both that which is seen and that which is unseen, the one who has knowledge of all that happens everywhere at all times, the one who is the ultimate witness on Judgment Day. From the root Sheen Ha Dal, which has the following classical Arabic connotations. To bear witness, to offer testimony, to have knowledge of, to experience, and to be present with. This is found 19 times in the Quran, and Allah knows best, hopefully I didn't leave any out. But at least 19 times that I found it. Today we're going to look at those verses. Sometimes I don't use that many verses, 
but I want you to see them. This understanding of this name, if you think about it, the root of this name, we get Shahada, which is how we enter into Islam as reverts or as converts. So of course this is very important. The understanding of this is very important and cannot be repeated too much. If you'd like to take a picture, um, the next two slides are all of the verses that I have been able to find um, on Ash-Shahid. Now some of you may be asking the question, why do some of the names have Al and then the name and some don't? And this has to do with sun and moon letters. So the sun letters, you, the direct article is Al. If it's the moon letters, the direct article picks up the letters that follow in the verb. So you get Ash-Shahid instead. So it's still the direct article, uh, but in case you were asking that question. So it's very interesting if you notice here in Surah An-Nasai, it's actually mentioned three times and in Surah Yunus it's mentioned two times. Uh, I find that very interesting. And then here are the final verses that I found. And let's look at them. And I ask you to pray for my voice. In Surah 3 verse 98, Say, O people of the scripture, why do you disbelieve in the verses of Allah while Allah is witness over what you do? So, um, later on we'll see some interesting pieces about this particular root of Ash-Shahid. But how aware are we that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a witness over every single thing that we do? And if we can actually realize and actualize, actualize the understanding of this word in our hearts, then we will obtain taqwa. We will actually live in a way that we are aware that Allah is a witness over everything we do. And I would ask myself and you to ponder and reflect for a moment that if you were truly aware of the meaning and the significance of Ash-Shahid, if in the middle of your doing something that is prohibited, you remember this name, what would you do? If you truly have taqwa, you would stop. If you do not yet have that, if your iman is weak, you will say, I know it, but. And then you will continue to do what your nafs would like you to do, what your lower self would like you to do. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 117, I said not to them except what you commanded me. And of course, this is Muhammad Sallallahu speaking. I said to them, to worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. And I was a witness over them as long as I was among them. But when you took me up, you were the observer over them, and you are over all things witness. There's a very interesting piece here to me in the sense that if we are to emulate the messenger of God, he was a watcher over people. How do we watch over other people? How do we watch over other people if we are gossiping about them, talking about them behind their back? Um, how are we watching over them? How are we watching over them if we castigate them, criticize them, and condemn them? So this, there's so much value, there's so many characteristics of this name that to try to do this presentation justice, I think it's impossible for the human being to do so. And Surah 6 verse 53 say, what thing is greatest in testimony? What is most weighty in evidence? Say, Allah is witness between me and you. And this Quran hath been inspired in me that I may warn you thereby in whomever it reaches. Do you truly testify that with Allah there are other deities? Say, I will not testify with you. Say, indeed, Allah is but one God, and indeed I am free of what you associate with him. And what spoke to me in this verse is that if I am to emulate the messenger of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then I will be inspired by the Holy Quran. Because why? The messenger was inspired. Now I know that the inspiration is part of Wahi there and has a 
many, many meanings. Because obviously when we talk about Wahi, we're talking about revelation from God. But of the eight forms of Wahi, one of them is inspiration and that's still available. It's still available. It's the only one of the eight that's available for mankind today. And so I think it's pertinent to ask myself and to ask you, am I inspired and do I pray to be inspired by this book? Or do I just complain and say, I can't understand this book, so therefore I'll just leave it on the shelf and let it collect dust. I love Allah. Then I would have to ask myself and yourself the question, if I love someone, is it okay that I never communicate and I never hear from them? What would your marriage be like if you never heard from your spouse? And what will your spiritual life be like if you never hear from Allah? In Surah Yunus, verse 29, And sufficient is Allah as a witness between us and you, that we were of you, your worship, sorry, unaware. And then later in verse 47, And for every nation is a messenger. So when their messengers come, it will be judged, witnessed between them and justice, and they will not be wronged. And how many messages, messengers? 125,000 messengers came to teach mankind the oneness of God. All with the same message. And they, and they will be there in front of each group that followed them on the day of judgment. As a witness. In Surah Al-Hajj, verse 17, Surely as for those who are true believers, the Muslims, the Jews, the Sabians, the Christians, the Magians, and the ones who committed shirk, polytheist, Allah will judge between them on the day of resurrection, for Allah is a witness over everything. And now the Sabians are a people of the book um, of Middle Eastern tradition. Um, and the Hadith uh, tells us that they actually are a group that converted to Islam. And the Magians were from Persia forward slash Iran. And Surah Saba verse 47 tell them, I do not ask you for any recompense, even though what I preach is all in your interest. My reward is only due from Allah, and Allah is a witness over everything. And I have to make another point here. Because the Messenger of Allah did not do what he did for money, many religious leaders day, today do what they do for money. They actually use the religion to make money. Now it takes money to do da'wah, it takes money to have a masjid. But some great people, we call them great people, on television today are doing it for their own benefit. If you are truly a believer, then you will not do it for recompense. You will do it for the sake of Allah. In Surah Fusilat, verse 53, In time we shall make them fully understand our messages through what they perceive in the utmost horizons of the universe and within themselves, so that it will become clear unto them that this revelation is indeed the truth. And that word truth there is haq, and I'll talk about it a little more later in the lecture, inshallah. Still, is it not enough for them to know that thy sustainer is witness unto everything? In Surah 58, verse 6, On the day when Allah will resurrect them all and inform them of what they did, Allah had enumerated it while they forgot it. And Allah is over all things witness. And I love this verse because I can't remember what I did yesterday sometime. I actually have to really ponder and reflect. If somebody says, what did you have to eat yesterday for breakfast? That one's easy because I always have a protein shake. But if they ask me what I might have had later, I struggle to remember. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a witness enumerates every single thing that we do. Do we live with that knowledge? Do we really live with that knowledge? When we open our mouth, are we aware of ash-shahid? When we open our ears, are we aware of ash-shahid? When we walk and go into a place, are we aware of ash-shahid? 
in Surah An Nisa, verse 33, and for all we have made heirs to what is left by parents and relatives and to those whom your oaths have bound to you. Give them their share. Indeed, Allah is ever over all things a witness. What comes to you of good is from Allah, but what comes to you of evil, O mankind, is from yourself. And we have sent you, O Muhammad, to the people as a messenger, and sufficient is Allah as witness. And what I did here is I'm just giving you all three verses in Surah an nisai And here's the next one. But Allah bears witness to that which he has revealed to you. He has sent it down with his knowledge, and the angels bear witness as well, and sufficient is Allah as witness. And of course, we know that the angels that travel with us, the one on our right shoulder is recording our good deeds, and the one on our left shoulder is recording our bad deeds. And they are a witness. They are an eyewitness to whatever we do. And when we do well, they go to paradise. When we mention the name of Allah, they go to paradise and they mention our name. In places of people, not people, but angels of higher status. So if you are truly aware of our shaheed, you will use the name of Allah often. Because you will know that that will actually put you on some dimension in the divine presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Ra'ad, verse 43, And those who have disbelieved you, disbelieved, say, You are not a messenger. Say, O Muhammad, sufficient is Allah is witness between me and you, and the witness of whoever has knowledge of the scripture. And we know that if you think about this, the reward of being a scholar, the reward of having knowledge and disseminating that knowledge, and that the angels and Allah are witnessing that, and you will be rewarded for that. Whatever you know, it is your responsibility to share. Every one of you are a teacher. And if you only know part of how to pray, it's your responsibility to teach people part of how to pray then you can find somebody else that knows the rest. But it is your responsibility to teach what you know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his beautiful manner, that which you don't know, you're not responsible. And Surah Ankabut verse 52, Say sufficient is Allah between me and you as witness. He knows what is in the heavens and earth. And they who have believed in falsehood and disbelieved in Allah, it is those who are the losers. In Surah 33, verse 55, There is no blame upon women concerning their fathers or their sons or their brothers or their brothers' sons or their sisters' sons or their women or those their right hand possess. And fear Allah, indeed Allah, is ever over all things witness. The context of this verse is about the kamar. It's about the hijab. And Allah is reminding the women in this particular case that he is a witness over this and whether you do it in front of the people that you're supposed to do it in front of. So what happens is you will see among Muslims that who is mahram for you? If you look at this, you look this up, so I can be un- a woman can be uncovered in front of her husband and her son. What about the children of their brother? What about the cousins? Islamically, I'm just asking you to think about this Islamically. From the Quranic standpoint, are we allowed to be uncovered in front of our cousins? And yet what you will see typically is that that is completely not seen. It's just a point. And Allah is reminding the folks here that Allah is a witness to that. So you will find, and I've seen it over the years when I visit large families, and of course many Muslims have large families, that the cousins are mixing freely, very freely. They go out together, they do, and so Allah reminds us that this is not best practice. In Surah al fath verse 28, He it is who has sent forth his apostle with the task of spreading guidance and the religion of truth to the end that he make it prevail over every false religion and none can bear witness to the truth as Allah does. So here we see something else. 
He sent the messenger of God forth with the task of spreading guidance. When you are spreading truth, what are you spreading? You're spreading guidance. In Surah 85, verse 9, To whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth, and the law over all things is witness. In Surah 100, verse 7, And indeed, he is to that a witness. And so now let's do some reflections from the classic scholar and we'll do some reflections from some other scholars. According to Mujam Mukayyith, Al-Laga, it's hard for me to say, by Ibn Faris, the topic of the verb Shahida, saw, witnessed, or testified in language indicates presence knowledge and the dissemination of such knowledge so how do i witness to you i witness to you with what little knowledge i have by sharing it with you and i testify to the truth of that knowledge now on another level if you look at the shahada it is called what a testimony of faith when you look at witnessing that testimony of faith, when you go from the Shahada to the Kalima, it means that now you have actually experienced that. It is no longer words, but it is actually in, inside of your heart. You are convicted of it. And your life, if it is internalized, will actually manifest and realize it in the world wherever you are. And again, if you look at the essence of this, we are encouraged to disseminate that knowledge. We are encouraged to teach people about that knowledge. The name Ash-Shahid is derived from Shuhud, eyewitness. Well, can you be an eyewitness to the Quran if you never look at it? Just a question for me and for you. And it requires knowledge. Allah is as shaheed because Allah is present with every being Allah has created and will create at every time and place. And Allah is fully aware of such beings. And Allah is with you wherever you may be. As shaheed is one of Allah's great names and it is a superlative of as shaheed, the witness. So the one who witnesses a nikah is a Shaheed. And by the way, is that right? Uh, we say it shahid. 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 Okay. So, by the way, whenever you choose witnesses, this is in the hadith, they should be worthy, trustworthy Muslims. Because how can you be a testi testimony? or testify to something if you're not trustworthy. So if you look to the Sahaba, when someone was chosen to sign a nikah, they had to be trustworthy. Not just any person just because they're my buddy. Today when I marry people, they say, oh, can so-and-so do it? I went to school with them, they're not Muslim. So I tell them, Two trustworthy Muslims need to sign your nikah and then your civil license can be signed by anyone. <laughs> yes. I think the second part of that, going back to the root word, would be the knowledge. So like in a courtroom, we have expert yes. witnesses. So they have to not only really be able to testify, but they must have knowledge about the subject matter that they're testifying about. Right. And then if you look, well later on we'll look at Alam, which speaks to this exactly what you're talking about. Um, the first thing that happens in the courts here in America when I've been an expert witness is they want to know where I was educated and how I've done this in the past. The very first thing that's established before you begin to testify, even in the courts here today. It is also said that Allah is the one whose knowledge is the very ultimate regarding all apparent matters, all things to see and witness. So again, here we talk about the seen and the unseen, the al ghaib And Allah is a witness to all of that. 
In Surah Ali Imran, verse 18, Allah bears witness that there is no God but Allah. As shaheed is one, shaheed, yes, is the one who, no thank you, and manifests what the divine knows. Now, how do you know what the divine knows? You have to study the Quran. You cannot know anything about what the divine knows unless you look at what the divine says. Allah has proven Allah's unity through all Allah has created. As Shaheed is the one who is present and from whose kingdom nothing at all can be absent and everything is included within the realm of Allah's kingdom. It is beyond our comprehension. It is beyond even our imagination to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a witness to every single thing that we judge as minuscule. That every single thing in the seen and the unseen world that is happening, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is witnessing that. Ibn al-Athir says, when knowledge is absolute, then al-alam, the one who knows everything, is Allah. If it is added to the innermost hidden matters, then Allah is al-Qabir, the one who knows the innermost. And if it is added to what is evident, then Allah is al-Shahid, the one who witnesses everything. So here you see we have three explanations covering different dimensions, and it is not sufficient for us to understand. In Madarij al-Salikin, Ibn al-Qayyim says that ash-shaheed means the one from whose knowledge nothing at all can be absent, nor can even the weight of an atom in the earth or the heavens be hidden from Allah. Rather, Allah is acquainted with everything. Allah is the one who sees everything and knows its full details. It is amazing when you look at the inadequacies and the weaknesses of human beings. Because if everybody in this room were to see an accident and no one talked to each other, every one of us would see something different. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witnesses with perfection every single minute detail. And He sees with perfection every minute detail of our behavior of what we say and what we do and what we look at and where we go and what we watch on television and what we listen to on the radio. Someone may ask, why is the one who is slain in the cause of Allah called Shaheed, martyr? The theories regarding the explanation and interpretation of such usage have varied a great deal. And I'm going to try to make sure I don't run these all together, but there's so many that this is a run-on sentence. Among such views are the following. Because, number one, he or she is living. And what I mean by that is if you die in the cause of Allah, you never die. You die in the eyes and in the understanding of humans, but you do not die. And you'll see more about this as we move along. For his or her death has been witnessed. And it's amazing because when we go to a janazah, we witness that person's death. And according to a hadith, that is a khutbah to us. That in the very witnessing of a Muslim that does die according to the natural way, we actually witness a khutbah in that. That is in the unseen for us. We don't think, most of us do not think of a khutbah when we are on that, at the graveyard. Or we're standing behind that coffin praying the janazah salat. And he or she became present at Dal Salam. So that martyr, that one who dies in the cause of Islam, is transported to Dal Islam, the place of peace, paradise. 
And then you may understand why one wants to die in the cause of Islam. And that is my prayer. Or because Allah Almighty and Allah's angels testifying for him. So imagine here that the angels are testifying for you. And they make no mistakes like us. Or because Allah Almighty and Allah's angels testifying for him or her that paradise is his or her abode. Or because he or she witnesses upon the departure of his or her soul from his or her body what Allah has in store for him or her of rewards and honors. Or because the angels of mercy witness him or her so they take his or her soul away or because he or she received the testimony regarding his or her true convictions and the good end by what is apparent of his or her condition. Or because he or she has a witness who has testified to his or her being a martyr, which is blood, for he or she will be resurrected on the day of judgment and his or her cheeks are bleeding. And we will witness that, folks. We will see that. All of these one-liners came from Ahadith. Please let me know, raise your hand or something, if I don't I advance the uh, slide so that you can actually see this, inshallah, and be a witness, not only by your hearing, but by your seeing, inshallah. Or because he or she is one of those who will testify regarding some nations on the day of judgment. Or because he or she fell on the ground upon being martyred, and the ground is called the Shahida. Shahida, sorry. Or due to his or her upholding the testimony of truth regarding Allah's commandment till he or she was killed. Or because he or she was present during the Maghazi, the Islamic military invasions. All of these are incidences that are recorded in even greater depth as you study a hadith. And if you study the seer of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu this is addressed in greater detail as well. Imam Ghazali has discussed as shaheed while discussing other great names of Allah and said that its meaning is due to Allah being al-alam. Since Allah is the one who has the knowledge of the ghayb unknown and the witness. The ghayb is what is hidden, unseen, while shahada, testimony or testimonial, is regarding what is evident, visible, or apparent. Is our shahada visible, evident, and apparent when other people meet us? Do people walk away from us and have a visual? That that, I met a Muslim. They witnessed to me in what they said or what they did. Or do they walk away and say, well, they're just like everybody else. And when they say that, it's not a compliment. People have said that to me before. <laughs> I will be somewhere and then they will say, oh, you're just like us. And I think, well, then I didn't teach enough. If you think I'm in misguidance, like you are, then I didn't talk enough about the right thing. So if knowledge is regarded as absolute, Allah is then al-alim. And if it is added to the ghayb, Allah is then al-khabir. And if it is added to the evidence of matters, evidence of matters, Allah is then al-shaheed. Besides all of this, Allah may also be regarded as the one who will testify regarding Allah's creation on the day of judgment through what Allah knew and witnessed of their conduct. Now I wanted to go back to something that Hassan brought up. In order to be a judge in Islam, a qadi, there is so much education required. I mean, if you look at a PhD program here, it doesn't touch what is required for true qadis of Islam. It is a very in-depth study that requires years and years to become a qadi. 
And of course we know that the Qadi, if their heart is not right and they are angry, then whenever they make a judgment on this earth, their judgment will be flawed and Allah will be a witness to that and they will have a greater penalty because they know. The same way that the Imams who have the silver-tongued preachers that preach so beautifully and eloquently, on the day of judgment, their tongues will be cut out if they were phonies and they were fakes. So a witness in front of everyone will be demonstrated one day that that person who you admired so much because maybe Allah gave them a gift of speech, that they in fact were hypocrites. So I say to you, put your trust and put your faith in Allah. Put your faith in the hawk. Put your faith in the one, the one who witnesses. Allah the most honored, the most sublime is the capable witness. So if we come to know that Allah is a shaheed who knows and witnesses whatever we do, we will remember in all circumstances that we are being watched by Allah. And such watching then becomes the best medicine for us. Perhaps this is a nice way to think about it. That my medicine today is my awareness of a shaheed. My medicine today is an awareness that I must develop taqwa. I must develop an attitude of behavior whereby I'm aware that Allah is a witness to everything I say and do. For we will realize that Allah Almighty is the one who is fully knowledgeable of Allah's servants, who witnesses what they need, who, as some scholars say, the ever-present one for whom the souls testify, the apparent one who is known as Al-Fatah. When one comes to know all of this, they will then need no companion and they will feel satisfied with Allah and will have no need for anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you study Imam Ghazali and you study some of the great scholars, you will read in their histories that the closer they got to Allah, the more they did not need other people. They did not do a lot of superficial partying. We call it today, let's party this weekend. I want to party. And basically that means I want to sit around and talk about stuff that doesn't matter. And we call that, I don't want to be heavy. But then on the day of judgment, we will not be heavy on that right scale. We're going to be light because we spent the time that Allah gave us, not witnessing about Allah and his messenger, but witnessing about those people that we call friends, the 1713 on Facebook. That delusional ideology. Addressing the Messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah 4, verse 79, and I've mentioned this before, and we have sent you, O Prophet, وسلم, to mankind as an apostle, and the law suffices as witness. That is, the law suffices as witness to all people regarding the truth of your message, and witnesses that you are Allah's messenger and one who does not have full control over them. Do we witness that the messenger of God, that Muhammad whom we know and love وسلم, is the messenger of Allah? Or do we sugarcoat it and say, well, there's not much difference in us and you, we're just alike. We're all in going on the same path. We're not all going on the same path. There are many and the majority of the world is in ignorance. Yes, we all believe in God and that there's one God, but we are not on the same path. And we need to know that. We need to be aware that Allah is a witness to when we say that stuff. And in my interfaith work, I really struggle. Because people pat me on the back and say, yeah, we're all moving in the same direction. And Allah is aware of what I say after that. And may Allah forgive me for all the times I weakened. What would be the better response? The better response is Allah knows best. best. When you don't know what to say, the best thing to say, as Brother Omar said, is Allah knows best. Yeah. 
We don't want to hurt people's feelings. That's, not, that's against our religion. We want to preach with beautiful words and eloquent speech, but we do not want to be liars. We do not want to be witnesses to a watered-down version of Islam. Because then we are no different than those people who are promoting stuff that Allah did not say. Are we? In Surah 6, verse 19, Allah says, What is the weightiest in testimony? Say, Allah is witness between you and me. That is, ask them, what is the greatest witness? Say, Allah testifies between me and you. For Allah, blessed and exalted as Allah's names, has ordered the messenger to ask the disbelievers, which testimony is the greatest and the most accurate? What would happen if you have that kind of relationship when you ask them which testimony is the greatest? And if they don't say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, or Ashadu an la Muhammad Rasulullah, or they don't say that there's one God, then they don't know. And it's our responsibility to try to teach them. Because there are many people that don't know that that's the greatest witness, that the greatest testimony is to say that there's one God. Then Allah asked for him to tell them the greatest is the witness of the one whose testimony does not permit any room for lying or error. And I don't think I need to elaborate on that. In if our man is strong, then we do not need to lie. And we do not need to say something about the hawk that is in error. So as Brother Omar said and reminded us, Allah knows best. The testimony, that is Shahada, of the Almighty is of three types. Number one, Allah's own telling people in Allah's book that Allah is the one who has sent the Prophet as Allah's messenger. Number two, Allah's own support for Allah's messenger in numerous ways, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest of which is the Holy Quran, the miracle of the Holy Quran, which is the everlasting scholarly and rational miracle. And it has been practically proven that all mankind is incapable of producing a chapter like any of its chapters or even a verse like any of its verses. And number three, the testimony of previously divine revealed books and the fact that messengers before him had already brought the glad tidings of his prophethood. Let's examine how this verse, this, these verses linked the description of Ash-Shahid with the most important testimony of all. That is the testimony regarding the Almighty's unity. Therefore, the entire or four quoted verse in Surah 6 verse 19 states, Say, what is the weightiest in testimony? Say, Allah is witness between you and me. Now, if we really knew the meaning of that, because one of the things, I'll never forget it. When I first embraced Islam, I would go meet people and they would say, I swear by Allah. So and so and so and so. I swear by Allah, brother. I swear by Allah. And I was like, whoa, I never heard this before. Because as Christians, we don't swear by Allah. And so then I'm thinking, wow. Then I said to a brother one time, brother, why do you think you need to swear by Allah? Is this something like really important? And I was ignorant. I had no idea what I'm talking about. And then later I learned that I was on to some truth. Because in a hadith, it is made very clear that you should only use this if it is like matter of life and death. And one of the examples in the hadith is when one of the children of the Prophet Muhammad was dying. And one person came to tell the Prophet, he questioned them. He like, couldn't believe it. And then they said they swear by Allah. But we swear by Allah when we're talking about I ate six donuts. Or I, I ate three of this. Or I swear by... I mean, we, we do this thing. Uh, we just do it to death, so to speak. And I want to remind myself and you that when you swear by Allah, it better be serious. Because Allah is a witness to that which you are swearing. And the you and me thing is big. So we'll listen to what we say. 
Just between me and you, sister. And we look around to make sure nobody else is witnessing. Just between you and me, I want to tell you, this is the truth, sister. No, it's not the truth. It's your subjective reality, usually. But it's not hawk. We really need to be aware that Allah is witnessing what we say. And this Quran has been revealed to me so that I may warn thereby whomsoever it reaches. Do you really bear witness that there are other gods with the law? Say I do not bear such witness. Say Allah is one and the only God and surely I am clear of that which you set up with Allah. That's powerful words. And we butter it up sometimes in our da'wah. And I'm speaking to myself too. And I hope that sometimes it's hikmah because I want to open the door so I can teach more. But if I give them a steak dinner when they can only have uh, uh, pureed peas, then I may not ever get to give them any carrots. We have to go with baby steps. But at the same time, the message of Allah, he did not sugarcoat it. He said to the polytheist, Say Allah is one and the one and only God. And surely I am clear of that which you set up with Allah. Powerful, powerful words. In Surah 1029, we saw it before, but I want to speak to this piece. Allah therefore suffices as witness between us and you that we were quite unaware of your worship of us. This may be paraphrased thus. Allah suffices as witness, O polytheist, and as judge between us and you, for Allah is fully knowledgeable of our condition and yours, and we were not happy with your own associating partners with Allah. Even if we had this in our heart, when we met someone and we could say to them, I'm, I'm sad in my heart that you make association with my Lord. In Surah Tawbah, verse 94, Allah and Allah's Apostle will witness your deeds. Then ye shall be brought back to the one who knows the unseen and the seen. Then Allah will inform you of what you did. That is, Allah is the one who knows what you hide or manifest, and who knows what you conceal and reveal. The ghayb is whatever knowledge is absent from those who are addressed, and the testimony is what they testify and know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so awesome to us that he said that we should not reveal what Allah has concealed. He will reveal it. Allah will reveal it. But we should cover the faults of our brother. And we should not reveal the faults of our brother. Now, there are some exceptions and this is found in fiqh. So let me make sure I cover the exceptions. If a leader does something wrong, it is the responsibility to go to those people who we will call it today board of directors and let them know what this leader is doing, of course, with proof. You must always be a witness to truth and justice. Stand up for justice, even if it be against yourself, your parents or your kin, the rich or the poor, for Allah is able to look after both of them, all of them. So remember that once when I was in North Carolina a man who always sat on the front row of the masjid and went to Hajj every year every year I was called to the hospital to tell this Arab woman who spoke very little English that her husband had given her sexually transmitted diseases. And I thought, oh my God, I have got to now find an Arabic speaking woman that won't tell the rest of the community this. I got to find a witness that I can trust because I don't speak Arabic. That's what I told them. When that man came to my home, I exercised a verse in the Quran. And I said that Quran tells me if I ask you to leave, you have to leave. And I did told him you're a liability to my faith. I don't want to be seen with you. 
He said, Brother, stop Allah then. What Allah has concealed, you should not reveal. He did not know the thick. Because with this particular STD, the woman could have ended up blind. So there are exceptions, but they're very serious. The Almighty has repeated the phrase Alam al ghayb wal shahada So here we see that knowledge and shahada Knowledge and witnessing go hand in hand If I want to be the best witness for Allah and the Messenger I must have good knowledge Correct knowledge Not just any knowledge But I must have a sound knowledge The one who knows the unknown and the witness about 10 times in the following reference. We see this phrase. In Surah 6, verse 73, he is the kingdom on the day when, his is the kingdom on the day when the trumpet is blown. And he is the one who knows the unseen and the seen. And he is the wise, the aware. And before I go to the next slide, not only do we want to be among wise people because we have the truth and we manifest and realize that in our life we want to be aware we want our hearts to be awake our spiritual eyes to be wide open and aware of what might be attacking our soul and our ears our spiritual ears not these but the one in here wide open so that we are hyper vigilantly aware of anything that might hurt our soul the one who knows the unseen and the seen the great the most high in verse 92 of Surah 23, the one who knows the unseen and the seen, so may Allah be exalted above what they associate with Allah. In verse 6 of Surah 32, that is the one who knows the unseen and the seen, the mighty, the merciful. In verse 46 of Surah 39, say, O Allah, originator of the heavens and the earth, the one who knows the unseen and the seen. Allah is the benefit, beneficent and merciful. In Surah 20, 59 verse 22, Allah is Allah besides whom there is no God, the one who knows the unseen and the seen. In chapter 62 verse 8, say as for the death from which you flee, it will surely overtake you and ye shall be sent back to the one who knows the unseen and the seen and Allah will then inform you of what you did. In verse 143 of Surah Al-Baqarah, the believing nation, the nation that believes in Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah, always remembers that its Lord Allah is the witness over it. And it is also the nation of testimony in every field. Its Lord is the one who has said about it, thus have we made you a medium, just nation, one who is balanced, not extreme right wing or extreme left wing, but one that is balanced, that has al-mazan. Why? So that you may be the bearers of witness to people and so that the apostle may be bearers of witness to you. So when I lecture in colleges, I always say that we do not have Muslim countries. We have countries that are highly populated by people that call themselves Muslims. Because there is no country in the world today that is operating by the Sharia. Is there a country that you could find in this world that is a believing nation and that the nation believes in Muhammad as the messenger of Allah? And they always as a nation, as an ummah, as a group, remember their Lord, that their Lord is watching what they do. No, we have corrupt governments that don't know that Allah is watching them. And some of the most corrupt, and I say the most corrupt because they have the truth. If you look in the Middle East, the countries won't even help their brother next to them. As a matter of fact, they will hurt them. So I cannot with haq, with truth, say that there's a Muslim country. The great name of Allah, as shaheed glory to Allah and all praise, is repeated 19 times, and don't worry, I'm not going to do all 19. Again, throughout the text of the Holy Quran. In reflections from Allah and explanation of the divine names, 
It is said that the name Ashahid means the omnipresent, from whom nothing known, seen, or heard can be hidden. It is a very interesting concept. There are people that you have met in the world who love secrets. They just love to have a secret. Ooh, they like to say, I, I, I have a secret, but I can't tell you. And they love that. And then they get your curiosity. Your curiosity raises to a level higher than your curiosity about the Holy Quran. You will just die to get that piece of information. Or you will live to get that piece of information. And usually it's trivial. It's not going to help your soul. As a matter of fact, it might even damage your soul. And who does not need approximation. Rather, Allah approximates to all. In Surah 42, verse 53, does it not suffice that your Lord is a witness over all things? Every secret that you think is a secret, there are no secrets. There are no secrets. The angels and Allah are witness to all of those things which you say are secrets. It is said that the name Ash-Shahid means the all-knowing. Allah is the one who shall witness against Allah's creation on the day of resurrection. Say what is the most weighty in evidence. Say Allah is a witness between me and you. One who knows that Allah is as shaheed will worship Allah in a state of vigilance, muraqabah. Allah will not find him or her where Allah has forbidden them and will not miss him or her where Allah has commanded him or her to be. The one who knows that Allah is a shaheed will suffice with Allah's knowledge and witnessing from all others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We often will go out and we want, will you be a witness to this? We want people to collaborate our story. Sometimes, perhaps, maybe even if our story isn't right. One connects with this name by asking Allah to grant them mindfulness, taqwa, and vigilance towards Allah so that one turns to and relies upon naught but Allah, sufficing with Allah's knowledge from everything else and supervising with Allah's vision of them from everything else. And seeing Allah present in everything and close to everything. Imagine that if our hearts were so vigilantly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so aware that everything we say and do is being witnessed, that we would see it, Allah in everything. That when I will look at this table, I will see Allah. When I look at the, my back sack, I see Allah. When I look at the chair, I see Allah. When I look at my computer, imagine that. Imagine that witness. Cultivate this name in your character being a, by being a witness over your bodily limbs that have been entrusted to your care. And I want to stop here and take it piece by piece. On the day of judgment, that which you thought was a secret that you did with your hand, when you stand before Allah, your hand is going to testify. It's going to get a voice. It's going to testify what you did with this hand. That person that you hit or that person that you used your power differential and, and usurped that that Allah gave you. Your mouth is going to become a witness to what you really said. Your ears are going to be, your body is going to testify. Your body is going to become a witness. Every limb that Allah gave you that does not submit to Allah will be a witness against you. It's going to be a movie like Steven Spielberg never wrote. When we see this, it's going to be unbelievable. Even the paradisial objects when we do good deeds that are going around testifying for us. I live to see this inshallah. It's going to be like something the world has never seen. We are going to be a witness to that inshallah. Cultivate this name in your character by being a witness over your bodily limbs that have been entrusted to your care. 
and by being a witness over the innermost contents of your heart. Folks, empty your heart of anger. The Prophet ﷺ said don't go near to anger. He didn't say don't get angry. He said don't even go near to it. And if you get angry, sit down. And if that doesn't work, lay down. And if that doesn't work, make your wudu. And if that doesn't work, pray. So be aware that your heart will witness. It will witness about all of the jealousy and the envy and all of this covetousness and stuff that is alive in there. So take the time to fix it to heal your heart, to empty it, to purify it. The messenger came to teach us wisdom, the book, the right way to live, the right practice, and to purify us. So I encourage you to take the purification process very seriously. And by observing carefully your family and kin for whom you are responsible. We as fathers have been given such a tall order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we live to what Allah has commanded to us, and may Allah help us to do that, one realizes this name when one actualizes one's witnessing of Allah to the point that one witnesses Allah in everything and observes Allah in all of one's spiritual states. Whether you in adversity or prosperity, you witness Allah. You say, Alhamdulillah. Somebody just hit my car. Alhamdulillah. I just was told I have cancer. My state may fluctuate, but I still know that I am a witness for Allah. And that Allah is witnessing how I handle that bala, that calamity. He is witnessing how I handle fitna. He or she who knows the real al-haq, the truth, witnesses Allah in everything. One who is annihilated by Allah is absent from everything. One who loves Allah prefers nothing to Allah. And with Allah is enabling grace. And reflection from the 99 names of God written and illustrated by Daniel Thomas Dyer. Signs of Ash-Shahid. Have you ever laid on the grass on a hot summer's day and looked up at the blue sky? Maybe there are a few wisps of clouds here and there, but the blue stretches on as far as the eye can see, like a giant eye looking back at you with a smile. Maybe you imagined how small you look to that giant blue eye as you stretch your arms behind your head and get comfortable. And then you imagine all the other things that I must see. The people, the towns, the fields, the oceans, the different countries. Perhaps witnessing that blue sky has given you a sense of the great witness that is a shaheed Allah witnesses or sees all things as they truly are. We don't have that capacity. Acting on our knowledge means sincerely dedicating our actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the right intention and with the awareness that Allah Most High is watching us, even if we do not observe our Lord or witness our Lord at all times. The Shahada is the Muslim's testimony of faith. It is the statement one makes to declare they are a Muslim, the doer of peace, the one who surrenders and submits. One way to describe a Muslim is someone who has witnessed the signs of Allah in the Quran, in the example of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in their own hearts and in the world around them. All encompassing. And now we will have a little discussion, insha'Allah. We can leave that on. In English, the testimony for Muslims is, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's messenger. And by the way, uh, we had someone do their shahada on Wednesday night. Alhamdulillah. Pray for them. Pray for Jacob. Yes, pray for Jacob. 
Joshua, sorry. Reflections. Have you ever done something good and not told anyone about it so that your only witness was a shaheed? This is a beautiful trait of Muslims that I don't remember seeing before I became a Muslim. That people will come and say, I want to do this, but I don't want anyone to know. I just want Allah to know. There's something so beautiful. I will never forget when I saw it the first time. How deeply touched I was that someone would do something solely for the sake of Allah and did not want anyone else to know. Have you ever witnessed an innocent person being hurt but not told anyone about it? Today, when people hear someone being abused in an apartment next to them, they hear the person being slammed against the wall and screaming and crying, people say, that's none of my business. Rethink that one. If we are acting on our knowledge, sincerely dedicating our actions to Allah with the right intention and with the awareness that Allah Most High is watching us, even when we do not observe our Lord or witness our Lord at all times, what should we do? Do we as Muslims, the doers of peace, the ones who submit, the ones who surrender, Keep quiet when someone is being hurt. Is that standing up for justice? Sometimes we might do something good and want others to witness it. But if we brag about it, how does it make us feel afterwards? One of the great blessings that I have learned is that sometimes Allah will give me something that I feel is very special that really, really is an answer to my prayer. And the moment I share it with someone, it is diminished. The specialness of it is lost. Why do I need to tell you that Allah has done something that I feel is specially for me? <laughs> so we're open for discussion. Anyone reflecting on these questions? <laughs>